Hi guys, Swangboy13 here, and today I've got a brand new video out for you, and it's not a weather video, nope. Today, filmed Thursday the 20th of August, it is GCSE Results Day, and boy, this year has been very, very different. Now, basically, I put a link, well, firstly, I put a link on the description uh, from last year's video. Now, I'll put a little bit of a brief personal story to it, I'm not going to go too personally, but last year, uh, I... Did functional skills level 2, both maths and English, um, which were both subjects I personally struggled with. But, um, pleased to say, last year I uh, successfully passed both subjects, which was just amazing news to my ears. And that result meant I could have had loads more doors open for my future. Um, and, uh, yeah, that video also that I've released about it was quite viral. Uh, almost 6,000 views at the time I've made this video, so... It's crazy, didn't think I'd get this many. I'm actually hoping this video may get similar amounts of views because I actually want to do a helpful GCSE Maths video. This year I took part in GCSE Maths. I didn't do English uh, this year. I'm over 19, but I'm not going to give further details on that for personal reasons, but that happens when you are over 19. But basically, um, I've decided to take one GCSE topic, which is Maths this year, and I'll focus on English the next year. Um, basically, um, spent through the majority of the year going through different topics of maths, for example, algebra, shapes, and um, money and stuff. Um, did, took a mock exam back in February, got a grade 3, but I knew there were improvements I easily could have done. Um, at the time being, I wasn't that annoyed. Unfortunately, now I should be, in a way. Lockdown occurred a month later, and that meant, as a consequence, all GCS exams have been cancelled which has not happened since the Second World War, which was an absolute bummer. And for some students, it was an unmitigated disaster. They worked so hard for it. Um, but I did get my grade today. Um, unfortunately, it's of grade 3, which was the same grade I got in my mock exam. To be honest, though, I'm not surprised. I'm quite relieved, though, at the same time, because although it is not a pass, there were certain topics we didn't cover properly. And around that time, this was when lockdown occurred, and then chaos occurred so uh, it's just one of those things but you know what I'm determined I will pass it I'm hopeful I may be able to retake it well not retake because it's irrelevant because I never really took the actual exam so I'm hoping to take the exams fingers crossed in November time um, or at the worst case scenario next summer hopefully by then surely the fibers would have eased off or the threat is much limited anyways enough of that today I want to bring you a um, important video uh, I'm going to be showing you my top 10 tips on how to succeed and get your GCSE grades, particularly for maths. It's mostly aimed at maths because a few reasons. It's one of the hardest uh, GCSE topics or subjects throughout the UK, but it's also probably it's got the most problem solving it and you've got to have your brain working on quite a few of those. Anyways, enough of that. Here are my top 10 tips for how to get a pass in your GCSE maths. Just before I begin to the first clip, some clips will have been filmed outdoors because unfortunately there were other clips I had to retake indoors because of the wind outside. Yeah, Great British Summer, typical. So, um, so I'm probably all out over the place, but I hope it's not too distracting. Anyways, enough of that. The first tip for how to achieve your GCSE maths to get a grade 4 at least is to exercise for at least 3 to 4 times a week. What helps for me is exercising is key to um, getting good grades basically because your body would need exercise you've got to look after your body you've got to treat it well um, exercising it helps you to learn better um, concentrate further and um, I'll give you an example when I did my functional skills English last year I went to the gym straight before the exam and a couple of weeks later found out I passed and it just proves I didn't go there I probably could have had this a fail which it just proves if you treat your brain well with the right amount of exercise it doesn't have to be daily but several days a week you'll get what you want so take that in mind exercise three to four days a week really makes a huge difference to your learning my second tip would be to drink plenty of water throughout the day however don't drink all in one go you'll be running straight to the loo ten minutes later and trust me that may be embarrassing in part, but anyways, 
the reason why I'm saying that is because water also, well it's good for you, but again it helps to get your brain's energy up because your brain obviously needs water, but without it, your body will die eventually alone with the brain, which obviously that, that will be death of dehydration. We don't want that. So basically, just drink plenty of water, you'll concentrate better, your brain will get more energy, and uh, even I admit, I do sometimes forget to drink plenty, but it will help on getting you a pass in your GCSE exams. My third step, try and eat a very diet meals throughout the week. Having the same kind of meals, you know, several days in a week actually isn't that good for you, even if it is not classed as unhealthy foods. Basically, eating a different amount, for example, one day you may have pasta, next day you probably would have rice, and then the third night you may have something, just a little bit of a treat for pizza, but as long as it's mostly healthy with just a little bit of a sweetness to it if you know what I mean basically what I'm saying is just make sure they're varied because a different amount of varied foods again also will help you to learn better and also it helps improve your immune system which can be part of your learning so just take that on mind my fourth step would be don't take late nights and short sleeps quite a lot of teenagers who do fail the exams usually I've got a theory on this but I feel it's a pretty good one is students don't tend to especially mid to late teens, maybe men in their 20s, do, do tend to stay up quite late and especially on a college or university school day, whatever, um, you know, phones are a main primary factor of why they're up so late because it can be distracting, you'll be texting your friends uh, for several hours and then forget to check the time and then got to be up by 6, 7 a.m. So you want to sleep at least six, ideally seven to eight hours, which will really get your brain up and working. Anything less than that, and I think you could struggle, and I also have to remember those steps as well. If you have less than six hours, you probably wouldn't even have less than a 50% chance of passing, because your brain needs time to restore its energy. Because, for example, if, you know, if it's the same as a laptop. It takes time to load everything up. With a brain, it's like that, but probably slightly longer. So always make sure you sleep plenty which again will wake up feeling full of energy lack of sleep and you could be in trouble okay my fifth step try and work on your weakest topic a bit more often than your strongest topic that's what i have to do i will mention one thing uh with my gcse maths the topic i'm particularly weak on is algebra and i'm never going to be a master algebra um but i think that's particularly particularly why I didn't quite get the pass because a lot of the fail marks probably came from that subject itself because I'm just not very good at it. Now you don't have to be a master at it but if you can really focus more on that particular, well not saying algebra in general because some students weakest topics will vary from student to student, person to person but basically if you focus on your weakest topics more often than your strongest topics, still try and do each topic varied as much as you can but maybe let's say 60, 65% of time focus on your weakest topics, 30 to 35% of time of your strongest topics, you'll get a much higher chance of getting a pass. So for, even if it is not a strong pass, if you can still achieve a grade four by taking the step, you definitely would have made some progress. So just try and take that on board. Sixth step, maybe write down some notes what your tutor or what you've learned from your mistakes over your journey towards GCSE maths. Nobody can get it right first thing around and getting a perfection every single session GCSE maths is unbelievably rare but to be fair it'll be boring at the same time. If you make any mistakes, write them down, you're more likely to pick up the pieces again and that's how it will get you to a strong grade with your GCSE maths. This final clip is indoors, the rest is outdoors so it's the way the wind decides to behave. My seventh step would be to give you is try and take advice from a friend or a relative who may have probably already passed their GCSE maths. So even if it's a 4 or C or whatever the year they've passed, if they've got some common sense of knowledge um, on quite a lot of topics with the GCSE maths, go for it. Ask a friend or relative. Just They'll do some homework sessions with you. It doesn't cost money, obviously. Uh, it's free because... You're living with them so take the opportunity to ask someone they know well about maths and just take everything on board similar thing with taking notes you know not just from a tutor but also from a family or relatives that will also increase your chances of getting a pass rate but the rest of the clip will be outdoors the eighth step maybe try and do a little bit of yoga
I may not be interested in yoga, but for some people this is a probably a very popular hobby. But doing a bit of yoga, particularly the last few days before the actual exam, or even the last hour before the exam, by switching everything off and just thinking of calm, positive energy, it will help you pass your maths exams. Now, in all honesty, yoga is not my cup of tea, but this may be ideal for others who may have a very popular hobby. But mainly, by just sitting there for 10 minutes a day or several times a week, by just switching everything off and just thinking silently, calmly, and not, not anything else, you will get 50% more likely to get a stronger pass or stronger grade in your maths GCSE exams. Because then you'll be more focused than ever. I hope no one's watching me because I feel silly doing this. Number nine, don't panic. Because by panicking, you're just gonna cause yourself in a mess basically. The more you stress, the more you panic, your brain just goes into a meltdown. Basically, like I said, with all the other steps, it wouldn't function properly, especially just hours or even days before the exam takes place, particularly with GCSE maths, because actually it is one of the hardest GCSE topics uh, compared to other subjects. But yeah, basically, don't get yourself in a pickle. Just stay calm, like I did with the other step, and just relax. And you know, if you have one of those bad days, Take some deep breaths as well, drink water, but mainly with the panicking bit is, the more you panic, the more likely you'll fail. The more you stay calm, and the more you take on board with your, the tips you've studied throughout the past year, the more you're likely you'll pass. And finally, last but not least, number 10, the final step, which is the most important one of all. Revise, 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 and revise, yes. Basically, if the students don't pass the GCSEs, it's most likely they haven't revised enough. That's what my theory is, but it's a good one. Basically, just keep on revising, even if it's some obvious topics you know well about. There are some you're certainly not gonna have much of a clue, but mainly, guys, please take this note seriously. You do wanna keep revising every so often. Don't just like do it every few months or you can't bother to do it all last few days. No, that's just not gonna help. Just keep revising on a constant basis. It doesn't have to be daily, weekly is probably the best option to do because it doesn't give, it's not gonna be too much all at once, but it also just keeps your brain on track of what you've learned so far because you can do it. Just been proven this year. Unfortunately, it didn't happen to be for me, but it's from obvious circumstances, but a majority of the students, almost four-fifths of the students in the UK have passed the GCSE maths and it can happen to you. So over next year's summer, it could be even about 85-90% of an overall pass rate. Make that happen. So just mainly just revise, guys. And obviously, like I said, keep on track. Do, take the other nine steps seriously. Even if I do do it just a little bit of laughs, it's also to help you guys take your, you know, take your steps seriously and hope you get your GCSE maths exam to give a four or five as we do number grades this year but anyways these are my top 10 tips guys i hope you enjoyed them if you don't agree with my service if you really hate it then fine dislike it but obviously i don't want any nasty comments you will be removed from that channel if you do that but obviously ideally please give it a like comment and subscribe obviously i haven't passed my maths exam this year but that does not mean i can't help you in fact i'll probably make it even stronger so just take these steps guys and this is the best advice I've given you. I hope this will help you for next year's summer. If you're a student who's watching this, you're 14, 15, um, just go for it, guys. And uh, I passed my functional skills, and it does not mean I can't pass GCSE maths. I just haven't shown my full potential yet. Anyways, guys, and also in terms of GCSE maths, it's not just for maths. It can be for any GCSE subject. I've mainly mentioned maths is because, like I said, it's one of the hardest GCSE subjects to be taught. And also, out of the other subjects you'll be I think you'll be using your brain most amount of time so obviously um, there's a lot of basically mysteries to solve when you take those questions but anyways that is it for this video guys please give it a like comment and subscribe 
and um, more videos to come soon. I'll be back to my weather ones very soon. Alright guys, take care, stay safe, storm is now out.